Uh, look who's still sitting over here. Still making a mess of things. I'm talking about you, Ghana. Ghana! Stupid cat. So, um, anyways, I put the fourth edition out yesterday, and, uh, so I was going to talk about it a little today. And that's what we're going to do. And sometime during the night, or early tomorrow, or whatever, I'll get the fourth edition squared away, and, um, don't expect it to take too, too long. And I'll start get working on the, uh, on, uh, Magic 2010. So, um, 7th edition, right? This is a set that, you know, a lot of us were looking forward to. It was really hyped. Um, they were talking about how they were bringing back old cards and how, you, were, you know, we we're going to have foils in the core set and all the foils were going to be black border, this, that, the other. And it was really, it was really a fun thing, you know? Um, uh, I remember, uh, when 7th edition came out for sale, we, uh, down at the FLGS, we decided to draft 7th edition, you know, take a break from, uh, drafting Invasion Block. And, uh, picked up some 7th edition, and, uh, as we're grabbing our booster packs, I turned to uh, a couple of the other guys, and I wave them around, it's like, hey, foil shiving. And, um, uh, I did that a couple more times, and we, uh, sat down to draft, and I waved my booster pack in the air, so I'm about to crack for first pack, and I go, foil shiving! I open it up, I don't even remember what I, what I opened up, I really don't. And they're like, did you get it? And I'm like, nah... So we finish drafting that pack, and then we go to pack two. I hold the pack up in the air, and I'm like, Foil Shivin! Open the booster pack. Look in the back of the pack. A string of expletives explodes out of my mouth. One of the other guys turns at the table, looks at me, goes, You got it? And I'm like, then I just flash at everyone, I'm like, Foil Shivin. That was kind of awesome. <laughs> So, anyways, so yeah, seventh edition we got. Uh, especially we had the Paladin quote unquote, cycle, quote unquote. Um, Northern Paladin was originally an Alpha, and then um, I want to say it was somewhere in Mirage block they printed the Southern Paladin, and then in Urza's block they uh, printed their black cousins, the Eastern and Western Paladins, and they all got reprinted here. A lot of the art had. Um, Especially in black and white, had Eastern and Western Paladin themes going on. Here we have our buddy the Southern. And there's the new art for the Northern. And there's uh, Vengeance with the uh, Southern Paladin on it, uh, Destroy a Tapped Creature. Which is kind of funny, because that's no more of a black effect, but that's okay. They reprinted Disenchant. Um, Disenchant wouldn't get reprinted too many more times. They ended up... Uh, Sidelining it for natural eyes. I'm not happy about that, but oh well. But the uh, the art looks to be a uh, northern paladin there. Pariah just Pariah just looks like a knight. I don't think it's any of the paladins. It's a good card too, mind you. It's a creature enchantment. All damage that we dealt to you is dealt to enchanted creature instead. Yeah. Reverse damage. It's been around for ages upon ages. Here we have northern paladin on it. Uh, next time a source of your choice would deal damage to you this turn, prevent it and gain that much life. It sounds fun stuff, right? Purity. Well, I also got Northern Paladin on this one. It's uh, three and double white to destroy all artifacts and enchantments. Glorious Anthem, where we have both Paladins on it. Uh, well, both the white Paladins. Colors and double white enchantment. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Um, you know, it's better than Crusade, technically, because it, it, it pumps all of your creatures. Though, in practical applications, it's probably only going to be used in white weenie anyway. But, um, that's alright, you know? That's not a bad card at all. And it goes in with White's, uh, whole thing on weenies. We had, um, cards that when you enter the field, you gain life. Um, uh, Venerable Monk, or as I like to call him, Venerable Punk. He's a 2 2 for 3 mom. He hits the board, you gain 2 life. He's okay. He's not really an exceptional card. I'm just saying he's in here. Along with Staunch Defenders, 3 and Double White for a 3-4 when he hits the board, you gain 4 life. And I've got a phone call, so I'm going to cut this short and pick up later. So where was I? Yeah, that, that was my mom. She was, like, playing around with furniture and blah, 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 that. And 
you know, my grandma's sick and they're thinking she's going to kick off within a couple of weeks, if that. I'm not too worried about it. I mean, I was never close to my grandma. And so, you know, her shuffling off the mortal coil doesn't really bother, bother me any. I know that probably sounds horrible and mean, but you know what? She's she's really old. I mean, she's like early 90s or something. She's well beyond normal life expectancy. So it's like, hey, you know what? She's had a full life. If she hasn't made anything of it, that's on her. And if I don't give a crap about her dying, I think she probably has a great deal to do with that. You know? On the other hand... When this stupid monster kicks off, I know I'm going to be freaking broken up. Yeah. Stupid. Anyways, so where was I? Um, oh yeah. Creatures, gaining life, blah blah blah. Staunch defenders, it's not bad. Uh, Breath of Life, three and a white, sorcery, return a creature from your graveyard to play. Um, it's technically a... Seriously, it's actually a slightly better version of... Ah, here we go. Resurrection, originally from Alpha. Which does the exact same thing for two and double white. So yeah, it's, it's a slightly better version of Resurrection. You know, So it's nothing they haven't had before. Worship, as so long as you control a creature, uh, your life total can't go below one. Uh, that's kind of funky. Uh, basically, it turns every car, every creature in your deck into Ali from Cairo. Uh, for those that don't know, uh, Ali from Cairo was a old card from Arabian Nights that um, said that <clears throat> your life total can't be reduced below one. Kid science, fun stuff. And then going with the illustration of this, we also have uh, a bit of an angel theme going on. We've got Sarah's Embrace in print here. It's a creature enchantment. It gives a creature plus two, plus two flying and vigilance. For two and double white. We've got Angelic Page. Uh, one, one flyer. You tap it for uh, plus one, plus one target attacking or blocking creature. Um, its creature type is spirit. Its original creature type is spirit. It's been since eroded to be an angel, which outside of changelings... Frisda, Frisda, changelings. Um, outside of changelings, it's probably the cheapest angel card in the game. Casting cost wise, but a couple is in a white. Sarah Advocate, three and a white for a 2 2 flyer, much like the Angelic Page, taps to give a bonus to target uh, attacking or blocking creature, though in this case it's plus 2 plus 2. Sustainer of the Realm, two and double white for a 2 3 flyer, whenever it's targeted, it gets plus 0 oh, plus 2 till end of turn. Kind of interesting. And a little card called Sarah Angel. I know I've complained about this illustration of Sarah Angel before. They brought her back with new art that was just, you know... It's not so much the quality of the illustration as the pose she's in. It just looks like a really awkward pose, and her helmet is an armored KFC bucket. I think I might have mentioned that before. Um... Green! Look, here's Elvis Champion. Um, I mentioned this before. Elvis Champion is a funky card in that it's probably the first card ever to be reprinted while it was still in print. Um, that is reprinted in a core set while still in print in an uh, expansion. It's originally from Invasion Block. They got reprinted in a core set, 7th edition. <sighs> it's kind of funky. Um, all your elves get the. Uh, well, he's a creature type is Lord. That creature type's been retired. So his creature type today is probably Elf, and he said, and he'll probably say all other Elves get plus one, plus one Forest Walk. Lawnmower Elf. It's only been out of print in like one, maybe two base sets. Solid card. It's an Elf. Blah blah blah. Fintorn Elder. It's a uh, basically it's a Lawnmower Elf for two more colors that provides double green instead of just green. Hey, while we're on the topic of Mana Acceleration, yeah, I put these down in order first, guys. Yeah. So we're on the topic of Mana Acceleration. Wild Growth, still in print. It's a land enchantment. Uh, makes enchanted land provide you an additional green when it's tapped for mana. The Rampant Growth allows you to tutor for uh, basic land. There were a couple other Mana Fixer cards and uh, tutoring cards, blah, 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 in here. Monstrous Growth, it's a sorcery for a cult and a green. It gives a creature plus four, plus four till end of turn. 
Um, the fact that it was a sorcery is really what made it kind of ho-hum. And these days it's outclassed by, I believe it's monstrous growth in the current core set, which was, of course, replaced giant growth, which has had a few illustrations over the years. It, but it's still a solid card. We're on the subject of making things bigger at instant speed. Hey, look, here's Might of Oaks, reprinted in 7th edition. I've got this guy carrying a tree under his arm with the flavor text of, Guess where I'm gonna plant this? You gotta love it when they have a nice sense of humor with the flavor text and it blends with the art so well, you know. Uh, three and a green, instant, dark creature gets plus seven, plus seven till end of turn. Speaking of big things, you know, we got Spine Worm reprinted. It's a 5 4 for 5 mana. It's nothing special, it's nothing great, it's nothing spectacular by any stretch of the imagination. But, hey, you know what? It's green, you get big fat creatures. You also get a fishing creature, so colors and double green for a 3 3. That's not bad. Lone Wolf. We also have um, Thaw Trample in core set here. It's 2-2. Uh, two, two. You may have it deal damage to a uh, defending player as if, it weren't as if it weren't blocked. Then we have Thorn Elemental, which does the exact same thing, but with a 7-7 seven, seven body. It's like fun stuff. Gorilla Chief needs 4 mana for a 3-3 three, three Regenerator. Um, these days he's outclassed... Well... He's a common, too. That's not so bad, though. Uh, these days, he's actually outclassed by, um... Uh, Cudgel Troll. But Cudgel Troll's an uncommon. So, hey, there you go. Yeah, Giant Spider, still in print. Then he brought along a little brother. Uh, Canopy Spider, a 1-3 for half the casting cost. Speaking of things that, uh... Sorry about that. It sounded like the cat was making a weird noise. I had to like, look over my shoulder like, what the hell are you doing, cat? Uh, speaking of things that are there to host flyers, like spiders do, we have uh, Wing Snare, destroy a creature with flying. Uh, these days replaced with better stuff. Squall, two damage to each creature with flying. Femur of Archer, it's a 2-2. Two, two. It taps for four damage to a target attacking creature with flying. Craving Mold, um, I believe this is still in print. Uh, two and double green, destroy target artifact enchantment or land. Pretty solid. Blanchwood Armor! Uh, originally from Urza's Saga, if I recall correctly. It's uh, enchanted creatures, plus one, plus one for each force you control. A lovely, lovely replacement for Aspect of Wolf. And of course, Fog. We all know Fog. You love it, you hate it, you want to rip people's eyeballs out with one, so forth and whatnot. Red, I know I've got a 7th edition uh, Shivan Dragon somewhere. He's not in this stack. I'm pretty sure I've got him in a, like, some wonky casual deck somewhere. I'm not worried about it. But we do have his Crimson Hellkite. He's uh, 6 and triple red for a 6-6 six, six flyer. And he's also got the special ability of X and tap to deal X damage to target creature, but you can only spend red mana this way. Okay. While we're on the subject of direct damage, hey, look, we got Sudden Impact, 3 and a red, instant. Uh, deals damage target player equal to the number of cards they had control. Um, this is originally from Tempest, um, which kind of, which is kind of funny in a way because this exact same effect, as an instant with the same monocost, was originally printed in green as Stormseeker. That's okay. Spinning Earth. Uh, it's a colorless and red sorcery. Damage to a creature equal to the number of mountains you control. It's a funky little removal card. Tremor. One to each creature without flying. Shock, it's no lightning bolt, but it's not bad. Wildfire, four and double red, each player sacks four lands, and wildfire deals four, four damage to each creature. Inferno, six to each creature and player. Each creature and player. There's a lot of burn in seventh, you know, more than uh, you'd otherwise expect at times. Especially seeing how much, uh, in fifth and sixth, how much effort they put in to downgrading burn. You know? Volcanic Hammer, 3 to target creature or player, sorcery speed for a colorless and a red. Um, and there's the thing right there. Uh, for a long time, we expected that if we wanted 3 damage to a creature or player, it would have to be at sorcery speed for a colorless and a red. We missed Lightning Bolt. We missed it hard. But oh well. Lightning Blast, originally from Tempest, uh, 3 and a red. 
at least Tempest Block, I'm not sure if we're from Tempest proper. Three in a red for an instant for four damage to creature or player. Pyrotechnics, four in a red for a sorcery that's four damage as divided as you choose among creatures and players. Pyroclasm, we know this one, two to each creature. Blaze, X damage target creature or player. There's a lot of burn in this set, I'm telling you guys. Orcish Artillery, we remember him. He's a 1-3, tap for 2 to damage to a uh, target creature or player and 3 to yourself. G2 Fire Eater, it's a 2-2, two -two. you tap and sacrifice it to deal damage to target creature or player equal to its power. And it goes really awesome with Granite Grip, which gives it plus 1, plus 0 for each mountain you control. Yeah, speaking of uh, lands, hey look, there's a Stone Rain, still in print. Gotta love Stone Rain. And if you don't like land destruction, you have to love stone rain. Two in a red, sorcery, destroy target land. Nice. Pillage, Colson, double red, destroy artifact or land, can't be regenerated. Goblin matron. She tutors her goblin. Oh, well, do it. Goblin gardener. It's a two one that when it dies, you get to nuke a land. Hey! Raging goblin. Hands down better than, uh, Fudgets Nuts. Mons Goblin Raiders. Uh, Bloodshot Cyclops makes a decent replacement for Stone Giant. It's a 5 and a red for a 4-4 four, four tap and sack a creature, and the Bloodshot deals damage equal to the sacrifice creature's power, the target creature, or player. And you know what? Um, it, it's, it, it's, it's different, similar thematically... All well and good, right? And of course, uh, one last card talking about just red being the way red is. Final Fortune, which also shows um, the uh, Western Paladin about to get his head split open from behind by the Northern. Um, take an extra turn after this one. At the end of the turn, you lose the game. That's just the way red operates, folks. I'm going to win. I'm going to win now. And you can't stop me. And if Red fails to win, or if you somehow find a way to stop it, you're made. You know? Black. Eastern and Western Paladins. Uh, one's nukes green creatures, the other nukes white creatures. Uh, Serpent Warrior. Um, the idea that with Black, power comes at a price. Serpent Warrior is a 3-3 three, three for 3 mana, but you also pay 3 life when it hits the board. It's not a great card by any stretch of the imagination, but, you know, hey, it, it's an example of what Black does. As is Foul Imp, which is a uh, 2-2 two, two uh, flyer for 2 mana, that when it hits the board, you'll lose 2 life. I mean, that, that's what Black does. Though I think Necrogen Scudder overall is a significantly better one. Abyssal Spectre, they've been, pr they've been printing him off and on since, I want to say, 5th as a replacement for uh, Hypnotic Spectre. Um, he costs more, he's, a t he's got an extra point of toughness. And the discard is not random, so he's kind of questionable as a choice for, uh... Well, it's hard to replace Hippie. But hey, you know, you got, uh, Flying Discard Engine, uh, 7th edition. As well as Oppression, whenever a player casts... It's a black enchantment for Coulson Double Black. Whenever a player plays a spell, that player discards a card from his or her hand. Yay! More discard! Ostracize! Black Sorcery, target opponent reveals their hand. Choose a creature card from it, they discard it. Mind Rot, they discard two. Duress! Uh, force them to discard a non-creature, non-land. Ragman was reprinted. Black, 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 tap, target opponent reveals his or her hand and discards a creature f at random. Yep. Oh, greed, another example of black's power at a price. Uh, three and a black, enchantment. Pump black and pay two life to draw a card. There we go. Revenant, uh, here we have black's... Sorry about that. Stray hair sitting in one of the stacks. I had to pull it out. Uh, it's a uh, four and a black for a star, star, flyer. Star is the number of uh, creature cards in your graveyard. Good science, fun stuff. Strains of Night, two calls, double black. Enchantment, double black. Pay two life. Sack a swamp. Take a creature from your graveyard, put it in play. It's a reusable creature recursion, guys. Good science, fun stuff. Grave Digger! What did I say about recursion? Yeah. Corrupt, it's a card that rewards you for playing a bunch of swamps. It's five and a black for sorcery. Um, deals damage to... Creature or player 
equal to the number of swamps you control, gain that much life. But foul, two and double black for sorcery, uh, nuke a land or a non-black creature, which can't be regenerated. Dark Banishing, nuke a non-black creature, can't be regenerated. Nausea, it's a sorcery, all creatures get neg one, neg one, till end of turn. Howl from Beyond, a classic finisher card, still in print. Blue gets a lot of nice stuff in uh, seventh edition too. I mean, everyone got nice stuff in seventh edition, which is why you know a lot of us were much more excited about seventh than we were about you know fifth and sixth, because in fifth and sixth nobody got nice stuff, except maybe blue. But whatever, right? Uh, fleeting image. Uh, it's a two-one flyer with a built-in bounce ability. Nice if you want to be able to use it with like board sweepers, like you know, pyroclasm, wrath of god, blah 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 blah. Kid science one stuff. Boomerang, it's a another bounce spell. It's a you know classic bounce spell. Temporal Adept, it's a one one. You pump triple blue to boomerang something. Counter spell, classic control spell. Remove soul, classic control spell. Force spike, classic control spell. Memory lapse, just annoying control spell. Uh, it's a counter a spell, but instead of putting it in their graveyard, you put it on top of their deck. Arcane Laboratory shuts down combos. Uh, two and a blue enchantment. Players can't cast more than one spell a turn. Hit science, fun stuff. Opportunity four double blue instant target player draws four cards. Instant speed draw card. Inspiration three and a blue instant target player draws two cards. Instant speed draw card. Sage Owl hits the board. Look at your top four. Put them back in the order. And it's a one one flyer. Hey, look, it's deck manipulation. Treasure Trove. It's an enchantment for two and double blue. Pump two and double blue to draw a card. Draw a card. Merfolk Looter. We know what these do. Archivist. It's a 1-1 one, one for four mana. Tap to draw a card. Yeah, you got a lot of draw a card in there. A lot. Uh, confiscate. Uh, enchant permanent. Four and double blue. Gain control of it. Yay. Timmy. Still in print. With a kick-ass illustration, if I don't say it. If you don't mind my saying so, you know? Oh, and Fat Marty got reprinted. Mahamati Jin. Fat Marty! Uh, then we got two uh, artifacts and stuff. Um, we see the uh, the various diamonds from the Raj block reprinted. Um, these days they're really outclassed by the talismans from the original Mirrodin block. Um, which for the same casting cost don't come into play tap. You can tap them for colors or you can tap them uh, for one of two specific colors of mana and take dam take point damage. Um, yeah, they're, they're, they're outclassed. They really are. But yeah, I guess at the time they were trying to come up with a, a way to have, make fixed uh, versions of the original moxes. Yeah, it didn't work out. Sase's ring, four colorless, taps for uh, taps for two colorless. I'm, I'm thinking that was supposed to be a fixed Sol ring. It it really wasn't. Um, it was later. Um, it's interesting. It would also later be printed with a new name in uh, uh, somewhere in the original Meriden block is Ergolem's eye. Kids, I just want stuff. Um, just from the presence of ivory cup right here, uh, you can tell that. Uh, the original cycle of Lucky Charms is still in print. Um, you'll also see the Eastern Paladin, I believe it was, on uh, Throne of Bone. Fraxian Hulk! He's a fun guy. He's a reprint. He's also a reprint in uh, New Phyraxia, so hey, go fig, you know? Teferi's Puzzle Box. Interesting card. Does weird stuff. It's four colors at the beginning of each player's draw step. That player puts the cards from his or her hand on the bottom of their library in any order and then draws that many cards. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Weird stuff happens with Tefri's Puzzle Box. Coat of Arms. Five colors. Artifact. All creatures get plus one, plus one for each creature in play that shares a type with them. Yeah. That does funk. It's a fun casual card. Usually in Constructed, it's just a win more card. That or it's a dead draw. You know, it's most of the time you draw that, you'd, you'd rather have something else. It does fun things in limited sometimes, though, especially these days. 
Um, well, not so much these days. I don't think it's in print anymore. But I remember one time sitting there drafting, and I'm seeing a, uh, a coat of arms go around. Then I stop, and I realize, wait a minute. Most of the, half the, more than half the creatures I've drafted are humans. <laughs> I just snapped up coat of arms. It was fun. Uh, Spellbook, it's basically a depowered library of Lang. It only remo all it does is remove your hand size restriction, but it's a zero cost artifact. Mm, sorry. Um, this is a card that most of the time it's pure tinny bait. People see, ooh, I can have any number of cards in my hands. It removes the maximum card size restriction, your card hand size restriction. That's awesome. No, no, it's not. It just really isn't. Pit Trap, it's interesting. It's an artifact. It's a re oh, you know, like most of the cards, it's reprint from an outside set. Outside of core set, that is. The two colors for an artifact, two colors tap and sacrifice it. To destroy target attacking creature that does not have flying, it can't be regenerated. It's not too bad. It's really not too bad. And by the presence of Sulphur Springs, we can see that, yes, Ice Age Painlands still in print in core set. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to wrap this up because it's getting late and I'm running out of space on the memory card. So I will catch you guys later. Be good, be safe, yada yada, so forth and whatnot.